Hello, Ed Starrell again. Today I'm having a follow-up video to yesterday's video, which was about the kinds of distances that you can go while still staying on the fast charger network for electric cars with a short range, such as the Nissan Leaf. Today I've done the same thing, but I've made diagrams different, and I've made a, a 75 kilometer radius. Now this would reflect a car which has a 200 kilometer range. And in this view, you'll be able to see how the driving range you would expect on a 200 kilometer car is different than a car with, uh, say, a 120 kilometer overall range. In my methodology for this video, I've made the assumption of a car with about a 200 kilometer range, such as a 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. So I've made the radius 75 kilometers. So this will allow for about a 100 km drive there and a 100 km drive back. First a look at the top of the North Island. There are plenty of charges all the way from Auckland up to Kawakawa, and the Kawakawa is the northmost. Not all of the charges that are available I've put on this map, it's just to give you an indication. So once you're up at Kawakawa, you'll have enough range to drive to Kataya and back um, on a charge, but that will mean that you won't be able to make a journey to the very top of the North Island in a single day without uh, extra charging from some other means. In the central North Island, you're not going to have much problems while you're on the central plateau area, but if you go all the way east um, to East Cape, you won't be able to drive to Gisborne and not very much further past Apodaki. You can't even get from Napier to Wairoa safely with enough overhead to be certain that you would be able to get back on a single charge. Travelling from the central North Island to the west will be difficult too. That is until a charger is built in Tomranui that will allow you to connect together some of these journeys. So although you're all right exploring the sort of central area, uh, the central volcanic plateau, you won't be able to get over to the west very easily by Wanganui or by any other means. With a car with a 200 kilometer range, you'll be able to explore all of the Wellington region and most of the Wairapa. It could be tricky to get to some beach locations. And also you will be able to go to almost everywhere in the Hawke's Bay. Wairoa is 116 kilometres from Napier, so that's probably not going to be a possible journey. Exploring Nelson, Tasman and Marlborough is pretty good. However, if you try to go down to Kaikoura, you'll be uh, out of luck because of the condition of the road due to the earthquake. Kaikoura still stays quite isolated in a 200 kilometre range car you'd be hard pressed to feel safe about driving from Christchurch to Kaikoura and still have sufficient range left over in case. For cars with a 200 km range there's still a fast charging gap in the southern Tasman area and while you'll be alright driving around Greymouth you still won't be able to venture from Greymouth to anywhere else. The Canterbury Plains are within reach and there's some new charges that should go in uh, in the sort of central Canterbury which are in fairly that type of area and uh, heading south towards Dunedin there seems to be a bit of a problem with the Dunedin fast charger not being online at the moment so hopefully the charge net people will be able to sort that out. However with a 200 kilometre range car in general, you should be able to drive all the way from Christchurch all the way down to Invercargill without much problem. And then with the new charger going in in Alexandra, you should be able to expand your range to be able to travel around sort of the central Otago region as well. My conclusion is, is that a 30 kilowatt car, a car that can generally take you around 200 kilometres, has a bit more utility than a normal 20 or 24 kilowatt car. So definitely I would say that if you can um, afford it, then go for a car with a somewhat larger range than a Nissan Leaf. But in general, a Nissan Leaf is still going to be really good for everyday commuting, driving, driving around town, and the occasional trip between towns and cities 
if you happen to live along a corridor well serviced by DC fast chargers. With new chargers in Fairley, Geraldine and Alexandra, and then also in Wairuru, almost the whole country is going to be connected, although there's still going to be a gap getting across that south of the Tasman area down to Canterbury. But uh, I guess these chargers will come in time, and then at that point we'll have one whole charging network that covers the whole country that you should be able to get to um, journey anywhere around the whole country in any electric car. So everything seems to be getting better and better all the time. Thanks for watching. Do you have a different conclusion than I do? Uh, do you think it's better to buy a 30 kilowatt car than a cheaper 24 kilowatt car? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching.